Join me tonight on Twitch at 11.30 p.m. Eastern after the conclusion of Sunday Night Football, where we'll talk about everything that happened this week in the NFL. And join me Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern to play some live NFL trivia for a chance to win cash prizes. Link in the description below. And now, on with our feature presentation. Just about everyone who plays this game at the quarterback position dreams one day that they can play in the National Football League. They want to be one of the 32, or back in 1989, one of the 28 men starting under center. And they want to be the hero. Many people never get this shot. Some people come awfully close, whether it's as a backup or as a journeyman, but never get to realize his dream. And then, there's the guy who got to live out this lifelong dream of his for a day, only to throw it away in just about the stupidest way possible. I don't mean that he personally did something stupid, like show up late to a meeting or fail a drug test or something along those lines. I mean just the way that it all came crashing down was so bizarre and ridiculous that there's no other way to describe it. This is New York Jets quarterback Kyle Mackey. On October 15th, 1989, after years of waiting for his moment, and after years of wanting to be a starting quarterback so badly, he finally got his opportunity to do this. Six days later, he was no longer the starter because he got injured badly not on the playing field, but in his own home, in his own bed. The 1989 Jets were a disaster of a football team. And perhaps no story exemplifies this better than the story of Kyle Mackey. And this is the story behind the strangest injury in Jets history. Before I talk about the injury in question, we need some context to understand who Kyle Mackey is, why he was starting for the Jets in the first place, and what makes this injury all the more heartbreaking and ridiculous. Oddly enough, Mackey is not the first player in his family to wind up playing for the New York Jets, as his father, D. Mackey, was a team's tight end from 1963 to 65. While Kyle stayed on the offensive side of the ball just like his dad, he would play a different position, and would play quarterback at East Texas State, which today is known as Texas A&M Commerce. The St. Louis Cardinals eventually spent an 11th round pick on him in the 1984 NFL Draft, but he would never play a snap for them. And after the Philadelphia Eagles cut him in 1986 and the New Orleans Saints cut him in training camp in 1987, Mackey was done. He was realistic about his chances and said, I had been to too many places without success. I said, hey, it's time. Mackey went back to Texas to coach football, with his playing days seemingly behind him. However, something happened around this time that got Mackey back into the game. That was the strike. In 1987, when the players went on strike, teams needed to fill out their roster with replacements. And the Miami Dolphins called, with Don Shula asking if Mackey wanted to have a shot at playing in the NFL again. Mackey jumped at the opportunity, realizing that he was getting a second chance. As was the case with most replacement players, his time lasted for just those three games, and his numbers were fairly pedestrian, as in three starts, he threw three touchdowns and five interceptions, posting a passer rating of just 58.8. The Dolphins went 1-2 in the three games that Mackey started, and once the strike ended, just like almost every scab, Mackey was gone. In the final game, a 37-31 defeat to none other than the New York Jets, Mackey threw five interceptions. However, with the Dolphins down 31-17 in the fourth quarter with six minutes left, Mackey threw two touchdown passes and was able to send the game into overtime. Jets head coach Joe Walden was so impressed by this performance that in 1988, he invited Mackey to training camp. Mackey didn't play that season due to hurting his shoulder and spinning the yard injured reserve, but he was back with the Jets in 1989, where he was hoping to make the roster and be a backup to Ken O'Brien and Pat Ryan. Little did he know that in 1989, he was about to get the opportunity of a lifetime. I've said it before, most recently in a video about the time that Patriots quarterback Tony Easton joined the Jets, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, but in 1989, the New York Jets were an absolute mess. Was 1989 the worst season in Jets history? Probably not, since 1996 and 2020 exist. But was it one of the worst? Oh, you bet. Through the first five games of the season, things were looking absolutely bleak for New York. They were 1-4, and, and amazingly enough, were the only team in the AFC that didn't have at least two wins through the first five weeks. The offense had scored just 17 points in its two most recent games. And the team was coming off of a somewhat embarrassing loss on Monday Night Football to the Los Angeles Raiders, where the Jets lost it on a pick six in the fourth quarter. And one of the big reasons for the early struggles of the Jets that season was the poor play of Ken O'Brien. O'Brien was a pretty solid quarterback, and he definitely had his moments, especially with not throwing interceptions and making stupid mistakes. But in 1989, he was struggling pretty badly. Just to give you an idea, O'Brien threw eight interceptions in 1985 when he made the Pro Bowl, eight in 1987, and seven in 1988. He had the best interception percentage in football all three of those seasons. Through the first five games of 1989, he already had nine picks. He took 16 sacks, completely failing to stay upright. And in his last two games, he threw no touchdowns and three picks while taking eight sacks. O'Brien was struggling and was a bit hobbled in the process. 
with Joe Walden knowing that the season was in danger and knowing that his job was on the line if things continued to be this poor, Walden decided that it was time to make a switch and try out someone else as the starter. Normally, this would be Pat Ryan, one of the more dependable and reliable backup quarterbacks in football. However, Ryan was hurt, so Walden had to go to someone else. And that someone else was Kyle Mackey. Walden said on the move, we need a little spark. Kenny needs to back off. It's not his fault. Mackey had started three NFL games before, but those were strike games. I'd hesitate to say that those count. At the bare minimum, there's an asterisk next to them. This start, however, no strings attached whatsoever. This was legit. Kyle Mackey was going to be the Jets' starting quarterback going forward. And at first, it did not go well. Obviously, Mackey was thrilled about the news. He said, I've waited for this opportunity since I was a little kid. I've been tossed around quite a bit. To be able to start a game for the team that your father played for has to be an incredible feeling. On the other hand, the Saints were absolutely puzzled. Head coach Jim Mora had a lot of great press conference moments, but this one is seriously underrated. One reporter asked him what he knew about Kyle Mackey. When Mora, confused, asked why the reporter was asking that question, the reporter responded by saying that he's playing on Sunday. Mora thought it was a joke, saying, he's what? Come on, you guys are nuts. So that should tell you everything you need to know about what Mora thought about Mackey, who went from being cup at the Saints in 1987 to now starting against them. And based on how the game played out, Mora had every reason to be skeptical, because Mackey did not play well at all. He went 7 for 14, throwing for 74 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception, and posting a pass rating of 36, which is worse than if it did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. Haven't had a chance to use that one in a while. Feels good. Anyways, Mackey was eventually pulled for Ken O'Brien, and the game got very ugly very quickly, as after the Jets jumped down to a 7-6 lead, the Saints scored 23 straight, and ended up winning it by a final score of 29-14. Mackey had a rough day, especially when you factor in the two sacks. You never want to have 67 net passing yards and an interception in for what is, for all intents and purposes, your very first start in the league. And it doesn't help when part of the reason he got pulled was for an infected elbow. Still, Mackey was in line to start for another week, as Joe Walden had no intention of sending him back to the bench. Ryan was still hurt, O'Brien had a broken left thumb and wasn't at full strength, and the only other quarterback on the roster was Mark Ballone, who was only acquired a few weeks before and had shown absolutely nothing in his decade in the league. As a side note, I made a video about Mark Ballone, so if you want to learn more about his career, then click the card in the upper right corner. Mackey was still the starter, and was going to have a chance to prove himself once more against the Buffalo Bills. Unfortunately, he was about to suffer one of the strangest injuries ever. In an amazing bit of irony, Walden decided to switch up his practice routine for the week leading up to this game, and decided that the players wouldn't practice with pads on. There wasn't going to be any hitting or anything like that. It was a no-pads week, so everyone on this battered and bruised team could heal. The last thing Walden needed is more bodies hitting the floor. And yet, even despite Walden's intentions, even the best laid plans of Mice and Mango awry. Because what he did not count on was his starting quarterback, Kyle Mackey, to injure himself in his own house in his own bed. Mackey shared a house with a teammate of his, sharing it with tight end Keith Newberg, who would never play again after that 1989 season, and would finish the year with 28 receptions for 302 yards and a touchdown. With Mackey nursing the bad elbow, on Thursday, October 19th, just a few days before the game, Mackey decided to get some sleep and lay in his bed. When Mackey went to bed, he rolled over, making a circular motion with his arm in the process, like a lot of people do when they roll over. The only problem? The bed was situated awfully close to a table or a nightstand or something along those lines. And I think you can put the pieces together and figure out what happened next. Mackey's arm came down elbow first on the table. And just like that, his already injured elbow got even more injured. The right elbow was so bad that he had to be transported to the Long Island Jewish Hospital and had to be given a lot of antibiotics. Just like that, Mackey was not going to be starting anymore. He had a golden opportunity and would seem like one last chance to prove himself and prove his worth as a quarterback in the National Football League. And it ended because he slept the wrong way. If any injury sums up the 1989 Jets and how bad that entire season was, it has to be this right elbow injury for Mackey, when he got hurt in his sleep through no fault of his own. And unfortunately for Mackey, that injury all but ended his NFL career. Ken O'Brien somehow started that game against the Bills, broken thumb at all, and performed really poorly completing less than 38% of his passes for no touchdowns and an interception in an embarrassing 34-3 loss. As for Mackey, he wouldn't start another game for the Jets that season. He was seemingly penciled as the starter for the foreseeable future. And just like that, the opportunity was taken away from him through an incredibly unlucky injury. 
Mackey played one more game for the Jets off the bench when he entered in the season finale against the Buffalo Bills. He did not play well, going 4 for 10, completing 40% of his passes, and posting a passer rating of 56.7, which was comfortably below the league average of over 75. Following the 1989 season, Mackey was released from the Jets. The move was inevitable after Walden, the only reason that Mackey was still in the NFL, was fired and was replaced by Bruce Coslett, and after the Jets spent a fourth-round pick on another quarterback, taking California man Troy Taylor. While Mackey would continue to play football, as he played some seasons in the Arena Football League with the Albany Firebirds and the Fort Worth Cavalry, he would never play another snap in the National Football League ever again. His career ended over the worst night of sleep imaginable. Had Mackey been able to play in that game against the Bills, and had the injury never happened, who knows if his career is any different? Maybe he stinks like he did against the Saints and Walden makes the switch, and Mackey follows the exact same path of never playing in the NFL again. Maybe he plays well or shows some flashes and starts a few more games for the team, or even gets to bounce around the league as a journeyman of some kind. While I would lean toward the former, there is really no way of truly knowing. However, he was denied that golden opportunity because of what has to be the strangest injury in the over 60-year history of the New York Jets franchise. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.